Hello and welcome to another episode of Zeno's Life. Today we have Sarvesh again with us and we will be discussing another chemistry past paper. Over to you, Sarvesh. Um, hi, everyone. So today we will be doing paper two, a variant two from major in 2022. So, okay, let's start. So over here in question one, we are told that magnesium has a high boiling point, a high melting point of 650 degrees Celsius and a high electrical conductivity. Explain these properties of magnesium by referring to its structure and bonding. Okay, so what we know is that magnesium is a metal, so it has a, a metallic lattice structure. And in this metallic lattice, there are positive magnesium ions and delocalized electrons. So what enables the high electrical conductivity is the delocalized electrons. Meanwhile, the rather high melting point of 650 degrees Celsius is because of the strong metallic bonds which are present in this metallic lattice. And strong metallic bonds. Okay, so when magnesium is heated in air, magnesium oxide is the major product. Okay, so this is because there's oxygen in air. S smaller amounts of magnesium nitride are also made. Okay, so air has nitrogen as well, so magnesium nitride is formed. Calculate the oxidation number for magnesium and for the nitrogen species, Mg3 and 2 to complete table 1.1. Okay, so the main the oxidation number for magnesium over here. So this would be plus 2. And this would be negative 3. Why plus 2? That's because magnesium loses 2 electrons while forming Mg3 and 2. And minus 3 because nitrogen gains 3 electrons. So this would be plus 2. And this would be minus 3. Identify the type of reaction which takes place between magnesium and nitrogen. Okay, so what we see over here is Mg plus N2 produces Mg3 N2. And magnesium has lost electrons and nitrogen has gained electrons. So this is a classical case of a redox reaction. So redox reaction because magnesium loses electrons which nitrogen gains okay so define enthalpy change of formation so enthalpy change of formation it's basically the energy change or heat change or the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound or one mole of a substance is formed from its elements in standard condition, in standard states, in standard states. So this means that, so oxygen, it naturally occurs as O2. So let's suppose you form water with H2 plus O2 and produce water. So the enthalpy change that you get when one mole of water is produced, when you react uh, hydrogen with half mole of oxygen, that's the enthalpy change of formation. So it would not be the enthalpy change of formation if you had produced two moles instead of one mole, or if you had used some other variants of oxygen. So suppose ozone, which is O3. So it needs to be the standard state of oxygen. When 3.645 grams of magnesium burns in excess nitrogen to form 
mg3 n2 23.05 kilojoule of energy is released calculate the enthalpy change of formation of mg3 n2 okay so what we see over here is that you begin with 3.645 grams of magnesium so that would be 3.645 divided by 24.3, which is the atomic mass of magnesium, which gives you um okay, let me not divide this right now. So what happens is that Mg plus N2 produces Mg3N2. So you have 3.645 divided by 24.3 magnesium to form Mg3N2. 23.05 uh, kilojoules of energy is released. Calculate the enthalpy change of formation of Mg3N2. So what happens is that over here, let me just erase some of these. Okay, so what happens is that for every 3 moles of 3Mg plus N2, which produces Mg3N2, you get 1 mole of this. So for every 3 of this, you get 1 of these. So you end up with 3.645 divided by 24.3 divided by 3 moles of Mg3N2, which would be... Let's see, 0 0.05 moles of Mg3N2. So this energy change is for 0 0.05 moles of Mg3N2. That means the energy change for one mole of Mg3N2 would be 23.05 divided by 0 0.05. And this would be... Uh, 461 kilojoule per mole. Why per mole? Because over here it's kilojoule and this has a unit of mole. So you end up with an energy change of 461 kilojoules. So we also need a sign because enthalpy changes have signs. So let's see. We have energy released. So that means products have a lower energy than reactants. So that means the sign would be negative because you are losing energy. So negative 461 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so moving on to question two, we are told that radium, which is an element found in group two of periodic table, exists as a crystalline solid in room temperature and conducts electricity. Radium chloride has a melting point of 900 degrees Celsius and is soluble in water. Describe the lattice structure of RaCl2 based on the properties described. So RaCl2, it has a high melting point, which is a character of a ionic compound. And it also is soluble in water. So what we can just say is that radium chloride, it's a giant ionic lattice. So another thing is that it's in group two and group two metals, they form ionic compounds with halides. So an example would be CaCl2, MgCl2. So all of these, they form ionic structures. So draw a dot and cross diagram to show the arrangement of outer electrons of RaCl2. So RaCl2, Ra, it loses electrons, which are gained by chlorine. So radium, it loses two electrons, and one of which are gained by chlorine. So over here, we would have Ra. It would have no electrons in its outermost shell. Meanwhile, chlorine over here. So 
what we would see is that RA would have a 2 plus charge, my bad, over here while drawing. Meanwhile, chlorine they would have a negative charge each with one electron from radium. So the circle is the electron which chlorine had by itself. Meanwhile, the cross is from radium. Okay, there we go. So part C, solid radium and calcium show similar reactions with H2O, but the reactions occur at different rates. Separate samples, each containing a single piece of solid radium or calcium, are added to equal volumes of water. Each sample contains an equal number of moles of solid and the H2O is in excess. Construct an equation for the reaction of Ra with H2O, okay. So similar to what calcium would do, Ra would react with water and produce RaOH to which is a base and also hydrogen gas. Identify which element Ra or Cl Ca reacts with H2O at a faster rate. Suggest how the observations of each reaction would differ. Okay, so what we would see is that radium would react with water at a faster rate uh, compared to calcium. So why would that happen is because, well, radium, it's kind of lower in the periodic table compared to calcium. So that means that radium can lose its electrons more easily compared to calcium. So that means radium has a lower ionization energy, more shielding effect, and because of which radium can ionize more easily to form a new compound. So yeah, radium, and you would observe uh, more bubbles per unit time. And radium would disappear quickly. Disappear. Okay, so suggest why these reactions occur at different rates. So as I mentioned earlier, so radium has more number of shells compared to calcium. So radium has a lower ionization energy compared to calcium because of the greater number of shells So greater number of shells, lower ionization energy, more shielding effect, also we could say radium has a bigger size. So what would the bigger size do is that so radium is bigger, calcium is smaller, so the chance of an effective collision increases with radium compared to calcium, so that would also increase the rate of reaction. So yeah. One of the solutions is cloudy when the reaction has finished. At the end of each reaction, universal indicator is added to each reaction mixture. Suggest pH values of the solutions made in both reactions. So suggest pH values. So obviously, since both are alkaline solutions, they are basic in nature. So the pH would be pH would be greater than seven, obviously. However, the pH of 
the radium solution should be greater than the pH of the calcium solution. So mostly why this would be is because radium hydroxide is more soluble in water. So since it is more soluble, it ionizes more and you would have greater presence of hydroxide ions in the aqueous solution, which would cause the pH to be higher compared to calcium hydroxide. So you could just write that down. So solubility of radium is higher. So yeah. And a sample of aqueous calcium halide, CAX2, contains either chloride, bromide, or iodide ions. Complete table 2.1 to describe a two-step process that could be used to identify the halide ion present. So step method observations. Okay. So the first step, it would be to react with AgNO3 plus HNO3. And the step two would be to react with ammonia. So observation with calcium chloride. So it has got Cl minus, this has got Br minus, and this has I minus. So these standard observations are white precipitate for this one, a cream precipitate or an off-white precipitate for bromide and a yellow precipitate for iodide and with ammonia. So now when you add ammonia, their solubilities differ. So for chloride, it completely dissolves. So bromide only partly dissolves. Meanwhile, iodide, it does not dissolve at all. So it doesn't dissolve. So I guess we have completed question two. So question three now. 0 0.025 moles of hydrogen iodide, HI or iodic acid. Okay, so this is not exactly iodic acid. It's just hydrogen iodide because it's a gas. Hydrogen iodide is added to a closed vessel and left to reach dynamic equilibrium. The total pressure of the vessel is 100 kilopascal. So yeah, this is what happens over here. Explain what is meant by dynamic equilibrium. So a dynamic equilibrium is a type of equilibrium where you have two conditions. The first is forward rate equals the backward rate. And since the forward rate is equal to the backward, backward rate, what happens is that these two process, processes are simultaneously happening. So this is decreasing at the same time and it's also increasing at the same time. So in effect, you should not see the concentrations of them to change. So that means concentration of species do not change. So describe one difference in the initial appearance of the reaction mixture compared to the mixture at equilibrium. So what happens is that initially there is a purple color of hydrogen iodide and then that dissociates or that changes into hydrogen and iodide and when you have that, it the purple color of hydrogen iodide, it kind of disappears because the concentration of hydrogen iodide, it decreases uh, during the equilibrium compared uh, to the concentration initially. So what happens is that the purple color fades Uh, write an expression for Kp for the reaction described in equation 1. Okay, wait, wait, wait. My bad over here. So the thing is that 
hydrogen iodide is actually a colorless gas and iodine it has color it has a purple color so initially it does not have color and later it becomes purple so it changes to purple okay so write an expression for kp for the reaction described in equation one so let's see the expression for kp it involves partial pressures unlike the equation for Kc, which would involve the concentrations. So we only include gases. So what we see over here is the pressure of hydrogen times the partial pressure of iodide, iodin, over the partial pressure of hydrogen iodide squared. So why squared? Because you've got two moles over here. And these have powers of 1 and 1 because that's their number of moles present over here, 1 and 1. At equilibrium, the partial pressure of hydrogen iodide is 86.4 kilopascals. Calculate the amount of hydrogen iodide gas present in the mixture at equilibrium. Show you're working. So the partial pressure of HI is 86.4 kilopascals. So we need to find the amount of HI present. So the thing is that initially we have 0 0.025 moles of HI. And at present we will have, let's just assume it like this, HI changes to H2 and I2. So let's say initially you had 0 0.025 moles of HI, now you would have 0 0.025 moles minus x amount of hi or let's just assume this to be 2x and you would have x amount of h2 and x amount of i2 so 86.4 kilopascals equals the partial pressure of this would be um wait let me see 100 times the partial pressure of this, which would be 0 0.025 minus 2x divided by 0 0.025 minus 2x plus x plus x. So what we are doing over here is that this is the total pressure 100. So 100 is the total pressure of the vessel and 0 0.025 over here, it is the number of moles of HI which was initially present. So the number of moles of HI initially present divided by this. So this is actually what we're doing over here is this is the pressure and this is the mole fraction of HI present. So because the mole fraction of HI present is 0 0.025 minus 2x plus x plus x. So this is the total number of moles. And this is the number of moles of HI present. So this, after some calculations, you would get 86.4 equals 100 times 0 0.25 minus 2x over 0 0.025. And that would lead you with um, x being, wait, 0. Point, we just need to find 0 0.025 minus 2x. So that would be minus 2x equals 0 0.0216 moles. So 0 0.025 minus 2x is our amount of HI present. So this is the amount of HI present over here. So 0 0.0216 moles of HI. Use the equation 1 and the bond energy values in table 3.1 to calculate the change in enthalpy delta H for the thermal decomposition of 1 mole of HI. Show your working. So how does one mole of HI decompose? It decomposes to HI, H2 plus I2. 
So since we have one mole over here, this would be half mole and this would be half moles. So let's see over here what we would get. It would be 299. So this is the bond which is being broken minus 1 by 2 times the bond being formed, which is 436. So this is being formed. So we are subtracting that minus 1 over 2 times 151. So what we're doing is that the enthalpy change over here, it is the value of uh, enthalpy, the bond energy of the bonds which are broken minus the bonds which are formed. So 299 minus 1 over 2 times 436 plus 1 over 2 times 151. So you would get the answer to be plus 5.5 kilojoules per mole. Describe the effect of increasing pressure on the value of Kp for the decomposition of Hi. So in the equation we had previously, we had 2Hi changes to H2 plus I2. So in our reactant side, we have two moles of gas in total. In products, we have one plus one, which is two. So increasing pressure would have an effect on Kp because only in the case where there were a different number of moles in the product side or the reactant side. Over here, we have equal number of moles in both sides, so we would have no effect. So no effect. HCl is prepared by adding sodium chloride to concentrated sulfuric acid. Hydrogen iodide is not prepared by adding sodium iodide to concentrated H2SO4 because the HI produced also reacts with concentrated H2SO4. Okay, identify the type of reaction that occurs when Ni reacts with concentrated H2SO4 to form HI. So NaI reacts with concentrated H2SO4 to form HI. So this would be an acid-base reaction. Write an reaction for the write an equation for the reaction of HI and concentrated H2SO4. So HI plus H2SO4. So this is a redox reaction, and you get 4I2 plus it would be 8 over here, plus H2S, plus, let's see what we get over here. We would get water, so H2O, and this would be 4 moles of water. So what happens over here is a redox reaction where initially the iodide, it had a oxidation state of negative 1, which changes to 0. So iodide is getting oxidized by the sulfate ion present. Explain why HI reacts with concentrated H2SO4, whereas HCl does not. So HI is getting oxidized by sulfate, which means iodide is actually reducing the other species. So what we can infer from this is that since it is a redox reaction, Iodide has a greater reducing strength compared to Cl minus. So that is the reason why HCl does not react with H2SO4. So question four. Bromine reacts with butane in the presence of ultraviolet light to form bromobutane. Two structural isomers of with the molecular formula C4H9Br are produced during this reaction. Draw the two structural isomers and state the systematic name of each isomer. So, okay, so what is butane? So butane would be C, 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 H, 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 H over here, another here, H, H. So we get bromobutane, which has only one bromine atom. So 
what could happen is that any of these bromine atoms could be switched. Any of these hydrogen atoms could be switched by bromine atoms. So if we switch this over here, that could be one possibility. And if we switch the other over here, that would be another possibility. So these over here, they are more or less the same because if you count from either side, this would be one if you switch it over here. Or if you switch this one, this would be position one. Same for these two. Either this would be two or this would be two. So basically, they are just mirror images of each other. So one of them would be C, 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 B, R, H, 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 This is an H. Okay, so the other would be C, C, C. So over here, we've got it in the first position. So now we can do it in the second position. So either side, it would be second. So you count from the side where it would get the least number. So since it's over here, you would count it from the left side because it would be number two from over here from left to right. Meanwhile, it would be number three from right to left. So either this is position two or either this is position two depending on which place you have attached the bromine atom. So I chose the left side over here. So H, H, H. So since the bromine atom is connected to position one, this would be one bromo butane. Meanwhile, this would be two bromo butane. Identify the type of structural isomerism shown in A1. So we have position isomerism over here because only the position of the bromine atom is switched while the rest of the structure is same. So this would be position isomerism. Halothane is an anesthetic. Okay. Identify the chiral center in halothane and mark it with an asterisk. So a chiral center is a carbon atom which is bonded to four different substituents. So over here we only have two carbon atoms. This is bonded to one, two, three. So these three are the same things. And this side over here, this group is something different so in total it has two unique substituents so this carbon atom is not a chiral center meanwhile the other carbon atom let's see how many ones it has this and this so these are unique to each other so one two this is unique too so three meanwhile this group over here that's unique too so it has four different substituents. So this is a chiral center, so asterisk. When halothane reacts with reacts in ultraviolet light, homolytic fission occurs and the CBr bond is broken. Construct an equation to show the homolytic fission of halothane. So the homolytic fission occurs. So what happens over here is CF3, CH, BR, CL, you have a homolytic fission under UV light, and you end up with CF3, C, CL. You show a dot over here to show that it is a free radical because of the homolytic fission, plus BR with a dot because it's a radical too. Complete figure 4.2 to show the arrangement of electrons in a bromine atom using the electrons in box notation. Okay, so how many does bromine even have? So let's see, it is a P block element. So filling this up, you would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's in group 17, so it has 17 electrons in its outermost shell. So one, two, three, 
Okay, let me fill it the way I actually should. So, first you fill it up in one direction. One, two, three, four, five. So, I filled it up this side. Now, you fill it up the other side before moving on to the higher energy level. Okay. Same over here. One, two, three. And that would be 17 electrons. X is an addition polymer. Draw the monomer of X. Okay, so it's an addition polymer. So the monomer of X has a double bond. Because that's how addition polymer polymerization occurs. It occurs between alkenes. So over here, we could see that this could form a double bond over here and so could this just come over here so the monomer for this would look like cl with a double bond over here so suggest why the disposal of items made from x is difficult so does not hydrolyze thus non biodegradable so question 5 already figure 5.1 shows the three reactions of 2 bromopropane so reaction 1 reaction 2 reaction 3 okay complete table 5.1 so we see that over here the bromine group has been switched for an alcohol group a hydroxyl group Okay, so this is a substitution reaction. Over here, the bromine has been switched for a amine group. So this is also a substitution reaction. Meanwhile, the bromine and a hydrogen atom have been removed. So this over here, this is the formation of an alkene, an elimination reaction. So let me just go and write over here. So substitution Substitution, elimination. So what reagent and conditions do you need for this to happen? So for this, you need NaOH, aqueous. And for reaction two to happen, you need, first of all, you need ammonia and then ethanol plus heat and pressure. And for reaction three, you need a uh, ethanolic sodium hydroxide, so NaOH in ethanol and heat. You also need heat for reaction one, plus heat. A sample of two idopropane CH3, CHI, CH3. Okay, so basically it's I, H, CH3. Reacts under the same conditions as reaction 1 to produce CH3, CH, OH, CH3. Explain why 2 idopropane reacts at a faster rate than 2 bromopropane. Um, basically, we could say CI bond is weaker than CBr bond as well as lower activation energy. So first of all, because the bond is weaker you have the splitting of the bond to be easier. And then the lower activation energy comes in hand because, because of that, more number of molecules would be having an energy level which is greater than the activation energy and then forming successful collisions. So C, figure 5.2 shows how butane one ol can be prepared from one bromobutane, one bromopropane, in three steps. So you start with propane, you end up with butane. So 
you have an addition of carbon. And you start with a halide, you end up with an alcohol, so you also have a substitution. Okay, so step one, so addition of carbon, so you reacted with cyanide, okay. So complete figure 5.3 to show the mechanism for step one, include charges, dipoles, lone pairs, as appropriate. So what happens is that this has a negative charge over here. And this has a partial positive charge. This has a partial negative charge. So the carbon atom, which has a negative charge, also has a lone pair. It attacks this carbon atom. And then the bromine exits by taking the electrons. So bromine has the electrons. And this gets bonded over here. And this pretty much is it, how this reaction takes place. In step two, butanitrile is heated with HCl. A hydrolysis reaction occurs. Construct an equation for reaction in step two. So this hydroly hydrolyzes to this over here. So this is a carboxylic acid. So how many carbons? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So butanitrile, so CH3, CH2, CH2, CN, plus HCl plus H2O produces CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, plus ammonium chloride, I think, NH. 4Cl. So let's balance this out. You would need two moles of water. And this is balanced, okay. Step three is a reduction reaction. Yep, it's a reduction reaction because a carboxylic acid changes to an alcohol. So yeah. So what could you use for this? You could use lithium aluminum hydride. LiAlH4 in dry ether. Construct an equation for this. Okay, so CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH plus the reducing agent produces CH3, CH2, four carbon atoms, so CH2O. CH2OH. So four carbons, four carbons. Okay, so plus you also get water which is released. How many moles of the reducing agent? That would be four moles. Okay, so let's see. The acid over here, it is reduced by four moles of lithium aluminum hydride to produce um, butane one ol as well as one mole of water. Question number six, I think this is our last question for today. Z is a molecule which contains elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only. C only contains, contains only alkene and carboxyl functional groups. So what would happen when Br2 is added to Z? So, uh, Z is unsaturated, it contains a alkene group, so that means the bromine will get added to Z. So the color of bromine, so orange color, disappears. And sodium carbonate, so the sodium carbonate, it reacts with what we have over here, the carboxyl group. So the carbonate salt, it reacts with an acid group to produce carbon dioxide. So you would have bubbles of carbon dioxide appearing. So table 6.2 shows the percentage by mass of each element present in Z. Demonstrate that the empirical formula of Z is CHO. Show your working. So let's see. We have C, we have H, we have O. So we have 41.38% of 
carbon, 3.45% of oxygen, 55.17. So this is their percentage by mass. So let's convert this to their ratio by number of moles. So we divide it by their mass, which is 12, 1, and 16. And you end up with 3.45. 3.45, 3.45. So now we divide them by the lowest number among them, which is the same, 3.45. So divide all of them by 3.45. You get 1, 1, 1. So their ratio by number of moles is 1 is to 1 is to 1. So their empirical formula is C1H1O, which is CHO. So yeah, here's the working. So part C is a question related to mass spectrometry. Deduce the molecular formula of Z. Explain your answer by referring to the molecular ion peak. So the molecular ion peak over here is this one over here. And this is the M plus one peak because it has a mass difference of one. So this is the one by the natural presence of carbon 13. So the mass is 116. Meanwhile, the mass of CHO would be 12 plus one plus 16, which would be 12 plus 16, 28, 29. So this would be 29. So the molecular formula, divide this by 29, you would get 4. So the molecular formula is 4 times CHO, C4H4O4. So yeah, the molecular formula is C4H4O4. Use figure 6.1 to suggest the formula of the fragments with peaks at 45 and 71. So the peak at 45. So what could be 45? One, 45 could be, it could generally be a carboxylic group peak because the carboxylic group would be 12 plus 16 plus 16 plus 1, COOH. So that would be 32. This over here added to 32 would be 40. 445. So this has a mass of 45. C O O H. So now let's see what is 116 minus 45. This would be 71. So anything of in the formula beyond C O O H would be the peak leading to 71. So C 4 H 4 O 4 minus C H O 2. So we would have C3H3O2. So everything beyond COOH causes that peak. So that would be C3H3O2 plus. So molecular ions, they have a plus charge. Suggest the structure of Z using relevant information from table 6.1, B, and C. Okay, so let me just erase a bit of this. So what we know till now is that it has COOH group. So it has a COOH group and it has four carbons, uh, four hydrogens, and four oxygens. So by now we have used two of these. So two left, three left, and three left. And we also have a double bond present. So what could happen over here is carbon, carbon, carbon. We've got three hydrogens left. So 
we could also have a COOH group over here. So HOOC, COOH. And we now have two hydrogens left. So HH and a double bond over here. So our structure is HOOC, CH, double bond CH, COOH. Okay, so I guess this is pretty much it for this paper, paper two, variant two from major in 2022. Okay, so back to you, Aishwarya. Thank you so much, Sarvesh, for your time. And we hope you found this video interesting and it helps you learn the bus paper a bit better. Uh, thank you and see you next week.